the dependent factor uh, will be is antibiotics given or not. Let's investigate two independent factors, one at the time. The first example will be gender, which is a binary variable, and the other one will be age, which is a continuous variable. So let's start with the binary one. Let's assume that 45% of the patients attending are men and 55% are women. And let's assume that 30% of the women get an antibiotic prescription and 50% of the men gets an antibiotic prescription. So being male would be a risk factor for getting an antibiotic prescription. This is how the statistical software GPO looks like when you start it up. It's used to calculate sample sizes. Um, we're going to look at an example where we're going to use uh, we're going to calculate sample size uh, before a study where, which we will analyze using logistic regression and we're going to um, in, um, show two examples in logistic regression the dependent variable is always dichotomous a uh, zero or a one uh, and the independent variable in this case can either be binary as well or it can be have have uh, it can be measured with a continuous scale such as age bmi blood pressure uh, and we're going to have a, a quick look at both uh, examples first we need to choose uh, logistic regression we can either choose it with these two buttons or with the test menu on the top in this case, I'll choose this pathway. Now we have set logistic regression. Uh, we are going to start with the example where the independent variable is a binary one, and then we need to set this value to binomial. Clicking on this button will evolve a flap to the right. And in this flap, we are going to state a few parameters which we assume. And these assumptions are hopefully uh, founded by looking at previous publications. In this example, we will investigate uh, factors at the patient uh, at the doctor patient encounter that predicts if uh, an antibiotic prescription will be given or not in this encounter. Uh, and we are going to investigate the independent factor gender. So if and the hypothesis is that men are actually having a greater chance of getting an antibiotic prescription than women. So if we assume that women has a 30% uh, probability of getting an antibiotic prescription and men 50%, then we leave these figures as they are. Over here is given a few examples of figures as they could be with an example of an odds ratio 1.3. Let's see what this figures means. Well they will give a sam they will give an odds ratio 2.3 and we want to transfer this over here. So we click on this button calculate and transfer to main window. Now we have an odds ratio 2.3 and this is the probability for women and if there is a correlation between gender and the pr probability of getting an antibiotic prescription uh, then we want to prove that with a p-value equal to or less than 0 0.05 and we want to have 95% probability of achieving this p-value if there is a true difference. Uh, this box is to adjust for other independent variables that you may have and to avoid making it unnecessarily complicated we don't uh, use that here. Uh, in this last box you state the proportion of patients being men and we assume 45% are men will 45% of patients will be men 
and now we click on calculate and we can see that with these assumptions we would need 261 patients however we should set this to two tailed and then we found that we will need 314 consultations where antibiotic prescription is an option to be able to establish if gender is a predictor of getting an antibiotic prescription or not. So seen from this example, with these assumptions we would need to investigate 314 consultations before we, with a 95% probability, could prove that there is a true correlation between uh, being a male and having an increased risk of getting an antibiotic prescription.